All right, so this month kicked my butt. I don't have a lot of great things to share with you guys today. But as always, we're gonna sit down and chat and I'm gonna do my eight month postpartum update. Just kind of give you guys an idea of how I've been dealing with things mentally, physically. I have a lot to update you guys on like my physical state and my body, how it's failing me. But I do wanna start off by saying that if for any reason you guys are new here, if this is like one of the first videos that you guys watch of mine, I have documented my postpartum journey, especially with my second child, Jackson, which is right now like what I'm talking about. How I've transitioned from one kid to two kids and the crazy that has come with that so i'm gonna link some of those videos like my postpartum updates all of that in the description in case you guys like want to get caught up in all of that it has been a journey it has been harder than i have ever imagined but it has been obviously super worthwhile like i have always said so i'm gonna give you guys my update i'm also going to answer some questions and kind of do this like q a style and answer some of the questions you guys left me on instagram but before i dive into questions i want to talk to you guys about my panic attack that i had this month i had been telling you guys i believe last month i was telling you guys that i was very tired that i've obviously been dealing with anxiety for a while now i've been very open about my postpartum anxiety but this month i had a very big scare um and i've talked about it on my channel i think briefly but not in like an official update i was sitting on the couch with joe at the end of the day like at night we were chilling on the couch i wasn't stressed at all i mean i was watching like a drug cartel documentary so maybe that stressed me out a little bit we were just like hanging out relaxing all of a sudden like out of nowhere i started to feel like i had like a headache and i started to feel like kind of like lightheaded like i was sitting down and i was like whoa like i lost my balance and that kind of freaked me out and then after that i started to feel like my entire arm was numb and i started also to have numbness and like tingling like that tingly feeling like when your arm and legs like fall asleep all through my fingers and i freaked out I freaked out. I looked at Joe and I was like, listen, I'm going to tell you what's happening, the symptoms that I'm experiencing because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a stroke in about two minutes. And I legit just was freaking out. My heart was beating out of my chest and I had never experienced something like that where i i literally just thought that i was going to just stroke and die like that was it so i stayed there on the couch for a little while then we moved up to the bedroom and it was time to go to sleep so i was like well i guess let me try to go to sleep but then the entire time that i was in my bed like this lasted like a pretty long time it wasn't just like a 10 minute thing the whole time that i was in my bed i was like if i shut my eyes i'm going to die i'm not going to wake up and my heart was still racing super fast and i was still kind of dizzy and i I had a very very bad night because i swear i thought that i was going to die that night so eventually i did go to sleep and obviously i didn't die i'm still here but then in the morning my heart was still like beating really fast and i was just feeling off and i had like a doctor's appointment scheduled like in like a week from then but i didn't want to wait that long so i ran to the urgent care i told joe like let me just go get checked out I went to the urgent care and they did like blood work there and they did a bunch of tests and i'll save you like the super long story but point is i did get blood work done all of my blood work came back fine thank god but also like very like then like what the heck is happening with me i had my thyroid levels checked my thyroid levels were absolutely fine so i know that a lot of you guys had been telling me maybe there was something wrong with my thyroid and that's what was causing me to be so tired i also had my iron levels checked iron came back fine everything that they could do like in their basic blood tests that they did came back fine the only thing that came back elevated was like the fact that like my heart was beating really fast that i was having palpitations. they did an ekg there ekg was fine so i told the doctor i was like look i think that i had a panic attack and i think i'd like to try and figure out like what my options are for treating this anxiety because obviously this is like no bueno like i'm not going to be having panic attacks like this on the regular thankfully that was the only one that i experienced like that like i haven't had another one since then i've had like general anxiety and being anxious and you know dealing with all of that and being on edge like I am just because I'm a mother of two but not like with physical symptoms like that so I expected him to kind of come back at me and be like all right well let's see what different medications maybe I can put you on but instead he's like I want to get your heart checked out make sure that your heart is fine so he referred me to a cardiologist he's just like of the thought process that like he wants to make sure that like your body like everything else is functioning fine before going and prescribing medications for anxiety and all of that so I did go to a cardiologist I had an echo done I haven't had the results of it read to me like the tech that did it was like I'm pretty sure that it's normal I didn't see anything alarming but the doctor hasn't given me the full results yet I do have to do a Holter test like the thing where they hook you up to a machine like to check out your heart and you wear it for 48 hours and then you take it back to the 
whatever or the place that you got it. I have to do that this coming week. So this coming week, I'm gonna do that. And then after they get the holter back, then the cardiologist is gonna come back to me and he's gonna read me all my results and tell me if there's anything to be concerned about. So I'm getting my heart checked, all of that. There's just been so much going on. And then if my heart is fine, if everything else is functioning like normal, then my doctor that treated me at the urgent care, at that point he said that then he'll look at exploring options for anxiety and whether or not I want to get on some medication or not. But point is that that thing was freaking scary. The anxiety attack, panic attack, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was no joke. So if you've ever experienced that, I am so sorry. And it's, it's terrifying because you really do feel like you're going to die. And I didn't know that that, that happened. Like I literally did not know, like I know what anxiety is. I know what it's like to have anxiety, but I didn't know what it was like to feel like you're having a heart attack or like you're going to have a stroke and it not be that that it be caused by just anxiety. So that's the story of my panic attack and that was just what this month brought me. But the good news is that like we've been talking about and trying to figure out what's wrong with me physically and all of that, at least my blood work came back fine. So thank you to everyone who's been like throwing suggestions my way. I still think that there's something off with my hormones. I still think that with the whole like weaning Jackson and the fact that he's not nursing as often and just maybe like just the fact that now my body's starting to re-regulate because of that I know that there has to be something off with my hormones because I am extremely exhausted and some days I'm super moody some days I'm feeling good and just feel like all out of whack so my weight's been like fluctuating here and there like five-ish pounds but I'm pretty much like at 117 these days I'll show you my stomach at the end of the video like I normally do but I'm gonna open up Instagram and answer some of the most commonly asked questions you guys have been asking me. I know off the top of my head, one of the biggest questions you guys have been asking is about whether or not I've gotten my period back. I still have not gotten my period back. So I am still nursing Jackson. I don't nurse him at all through the night. So I used to nurse him all through the night, but when we sleep trained him, he started going to sleep like around seven and he goes 12 hours without feeding. So I put him to bed at seven and I don't nurse him again till about seven in the morning too. So I am nursing him a lot less so i thought honestly that right away i'd get my period back but i still do not have my period i am still taking my birth control i'm taking the slind which i'm dying to get off of dying to get off of that thing because i know that that thing has made me a freaking lunatic so i have to schedule an appointment with an ob i have to find one up here and then see if i can just have something else like get back on the um nuva ring i used to do the nuva ring way back when before i got pregnant with riley so explore some other options because the mini pill has just been awful to me it was awful to me last time that i was on it and i had a feeling that the same thing would happen now and here i am and i know that a lot of the mood swings and the irritability and the just not feeling myself I, I think a lot of it has to do with that so have you been taking any supplements for weight loss while nursing i have not been taking any supplements for weight loss ever i don't think i've ever taken supplements for weight loss the only thing i've been taking are vitamins i've been taking ritual vitamins and some vitamin c because the ritual vitamins don't have vitamin c and then i've been taking the collagen peptides like every day with my coffee i've talked about that a million times the collagen peptides though aren't for weight loss they're more for like your hair and your nails and your skin and that is what i take for the hair loss which i believe i believe has gotten better like joe was so funny the other day we were like in the shower and joe was like you know i think you're not shedding as much because that's what he you know says that i do that i shed he's like i haven't noticed like there's been a bunch of like hairballs all over the floor and i was like well thank you so much joseph i'm glad that you see some improvement so if you ask joe he thinks that i am not uh, losing my hair as much as I was so I think that's getting better I can't tell you 100% if it's a collagen peptides or not but I've been a fan of those I haven't taken any supplements for weight loss how do you deal with mom guilt that's just like such a generic question but it's something that I've been dealing with all this time and there's so much guilt <laughs> there's so much guilt that comes with being a mother like it's insane so if you're feeling that like you're not alone like just this week I was thinking about like the pandemic and like all the things that the kids are like missing out on and like i know that's not my fault but i still feel guilty that like in a way like i'm taking stuff away from my kids or they're not experiencing certain things i start thinking then also about like the fact that they're not around my family all the time right now with the move and the whole situation i'm like you know i feel guilty that 
haven't given them that experience and then i've been also feeling like the guilt of you know i've been spending a lot of time with jackson and then riley will be like mama can we play together and then i'm like exhausted and i i don't want to play with her like i know that sounds awful like when i put jackson down for his nap there's some time when i can devote to riley and a lot of times i do i don't want you to think that i neglect my child or that i never want to play with her but there's some days when it's been a rough day or like i have a lot of anxiety and i literally just want to like sit on the couch for however long he naps for and she'll be like mama 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 let's play together and as much as it breaks my heart like there's some days that i'm just like I don't I don't feel like it and then I feel guilty because I don't feel like it so there's the guilt of that then I also feel guilty the times when I do spend more time with Jackson and then I'm like man I should be spending more time with Riley there's like a million different things that you can feel guilty about I mean I will have these thoughts but I just try to remember that I'm doing the best that I can that I am loving my children I am keeping them safe I am here for them and I'm always gonna be here for them I love them more than anything i would die for them so i just keep telling myself that regardless of all the craziness that's going on i'm still a good mom and that's really i think all that we can all do like, we can just do our best and that's about it how are the hormones eight months postpartum the hormones are all over the freaking place like i don't remember being this all out of whack with riley and joe actually brought it to my attention like the other night he told me that he didn't remember me being this stressed out with Riley. Like the fact that I get so worked up and anxious like when Jackson doesn't take his nap or when he's having a hard time going to sleep and all of that and that I get anxiety and that I get like shut down and that I have these mood swings and all of that. He's like, you know, you didn't really do this with Riley so why are you doing this now? And I don't know. I don't know if it's just the fact that now I have more on my plate, now I have the two kids, or if this time around just my body has adjusted like more poorly. Like I, I don't know what it is, but the hormones have been insane. And at this point, I'm eight months postpartum, I would have thought that the more time that goes on, like the more I would feel a little bit more stable <laughs> and that's not the case i'm also not having coffee by the way so that is something else that has attributed to some of my irritability and all of that because when i had the panic attack i was like okay let's let's try something let's try to get off of the coffee get off of the caffeine because the caffeine does give me heart palpitations so if i'm anxious and on top of that i'm drinking coffee like is it possible that i'm giving myself like more anxiety or like my heart's going to be beating faster because of the caffeine all of that so i did like i went cold turkey and like from the day i decided to stop i have not had caffeine so my coffee is decaf now and that presented its whole own set of problems because when i first stopped the coffee i was getting bad migraines and i was super irritable and i know that that is probably like some of the withdrawal symptoms from the caffeine but now i want to say we're probably two three weeks into the no caffeine and i'm not having the headaches anymore but i am like tired because i think my body like needs the caffeine but yeah that's something else that has probably made me a little crazy this month you still pump are you worried about your milk supply since he sleeps through the night so i do not pump at this point i do not pump at all not because i'm against pumping or anything like that i just i don't like to pump i have never liked to pump i'll pump if i have to if i needed to or if i decided that's what i wanted to do with him i would but at this point I don't feel like my body needs it and like I feel like he's getting enough milk. I kind of have been nursing him on demand throughout the day. I don't have like a strict schedule for him. Whenever I feel like he's wanting to nurse, whenever he's crawling at me, scratching up my boobs, like I'll be like, all right, it's time to nurse. I also nurse him like right when he wakes up, right before bed and usually like right before his two naps. So I'm pretty confident that he's getting enough milk in. So I'm not really concerned too much at this point about my milk supply. Like I haven't taken him to the pediatrician since his last visit, which I believe was at six months. So if next time I take him to the doctor, they're like, hey, he's not eating enough or he's off of his little weight scale or whatever, then maybe I'll decide to pump or to supplement with formula or something like that. But at this point, I'm not too concerned about it. I wake up in the morning and my boobs are super full. So there's milk in there and he has it in the morning. But no, I'm not pumping right now. So somebody asked if there were any differences in my body at eight months after Jackson versus eight months after Riley. I want to say that around this time with Riley, like when I was eight or nine months postpartum is probably like the most fit I was ever in my life. Like I remember looking back on some of those videos and stuff from when I was around nine months postpartum and I was like super, super skinny. So I had like lost a whole ton 
of the baby weight around then and I feel like now I'm kind of you know more or less at the same place like I feel good about my weight and how my clothes is fitting me and all of that the biggest difference I would say honestly is that I have more stretch marks this time around like the stretch marks are still there and they're gonna stay there forever but other than that no major differences but I am gonna be working on toning a little bit more and like I'm doing like more arm weights and stuff because even though my weight is okay I want to be like more toned i have lost my butt like i used to have a nice butt but now it's like gone it's like paper so i'm working on doing some squats so that i can get my butt back and you know like lift it up a little bit because it's really sad these days and then somebody else asked about the stretch marks like did i use any cream i haven't been using any creams because i just i'm a failure and i just can't stick to anything you know product wise or routine wise like i just I have some creams there and I just never use them because I'm lazy and I just figured that they're not going to probably do much on my stretch marks anyway so I just don't waste my money and I don't buy things like that. Alright so this person is asking how do you deal with self esteem and your sex life during postpartum? You know my self esteem I think that I have gotten to a place in my life where I'm like look I've had two kids I'm a freaking badass I love my body and it is what it is like there are stretch marks there are things like I said, you know, my butt is a sad butt these days, but it doesn't make me any less of me, any less of a woman. I thankfully, like, I've got a lot of anxiety and all of that, but I have never struggled with self esteem. Like, I am trying to accept myself and accept my body and all of the things for me this is the body and the skin that god gave me and i love it and i'm trying to just like constantly remind myself of that and i know that social media makes it super hard and all these freaking filters that everybody uses every single day make it really hard but i try to remind myself that a lot of the things that we see are fake and that's why i try to do my best here on my channel and in my platforms to show you what things are really like because i think that we're going down a dangerous road where like everybody looks super airbrushed and face tuned and filtered out all the time and it's getting to a point where it's unrealistic it's unrealistic and it's damaging honestly to us as grown women so i can only imagine what it's doing to like teenage girls and then i think about like my daughter growing up to be that way like i don't want riley to get a phone when she's like 12 13 years old and like the first app that she downloads is facetune because she wants to you know alter how she looks so i'm trying to set a good example for her and you know embracing what i got and trying to do what i can to be healthy to eat healthy and to you know work out here and there to the extent that i like and then as far as sex life goes you know like joe and i we still have sex but it's different and we've kind of talked about that a little bit in our q a that we did which i'm so glad that you guys like but is it different it's different it's different and and that's okay you know like we're older our situation is different maybe at some other point in our life we'll like suddenly get a bunch of energy and then you know like want to do it all the time but right now it's not it i think as long as you guys are both on the same page and you communicate like that's what's important like if you're not feeling the sexiest or you don't really feel like you know you're in the mood like first of all if you're not in the mood it's okay like you have children and you can be tired but every once in a while just try to remember that things don't have to be perfect you don't have to have the rose petals on the bed you don't have to have the freaking music playing you don't you know you don't have to like have everything perfect and your body doesn't have to look like from a freaking magazine because that's not real first of all remember it's not real and at the end of the day i'm pretty sure that your partner does not care your partner just wants to you know have a good time with you and just just try to keep that in mind so again a lot of questions about whether or not i have dealt with postpartum depression no postpartum depression i am not depressed i am not sad i don't go to a corner and just cry because i'm sad or i feel like life sucks i really don't feel like i've had postpartum depression but postpartum anxiety yes and through the roof so how do you keep yourself sane on bad days when nothing goes well with the kids you guys see like i'm hanging by a thread here like i don't know if i would say that i stay sane i stay somewhat sane but totally sane definitely not i have had plenty of those days where like literally it's one thing after the other like you know jackson doesn't nap in the morning and then he's crying and the crying gets to me the crying absolutely a thousand percent triggers my anxiety and it's just physiologically my heart starts beating and i get anxious and i'm like can he just stop crying and 
like the crying gets to me and the whining on Riley's end also gets to me. So I have definitely had days when, you know, it starts off bad and then, you know, something happens and they're just both in a mood. All I try to do is to like remember that, you know, obviously they are kids, they are babies. It is not a personal thing. Um, I started to read The Montessori Toddler. I actually have it on my bedside table, but I started to read that. I'm reading a chapter about like tantrums and things to try to help me with um, Riley's difficulties you know and the fact that she's going through those terrible twos and she's being a little three-nager and all of that so i'm trying to educate myself honestly on different tactics and different things that i can do to maybe like de-escalate those situations so that's one of the things that i'm reading and then the other thing that i'm reading is this book that my sister gave me for my birthday happy 30th birthday uh you have anxiety here's a book but this is actually a very highly recommended book a couple of you guys actually reached out to me and told me that like in college this was like one of your textbooks for i forgot what class it's supposed to be a really great book and i've heard great things so i'm trying to read and like i said educate myself so that i have like more tools in my toolbox for those kind of days when things are just absolutely crazy but one of the things that i also try to do is like i want to make sure that throughout the day like obviously i'm taking care of the kids and that's my main priority and i have to you know obviously make sure that they're safe and that they're fed and all of those things but i like to have like just a couple things that I do for myself and that I know that throughout the day I have moments where I can like look forward to doing certain things if that makes any sense. So like when I write out my to-do list, I'll have things like, you know, wash the sheets, do Riley's laundry and any of the other things that I have to do around the house. But I'll also have stuff on there like read your book or if there's like a specific podcast that I want to listen to that day, I'll be like, you know, listen to podcasts or watch this person's YouTube video. Like there's certain things that I purposely will write on my to-do list to make sure that I try to find a way to fit in some things that like bring me joy and that I just want to do for myself. So that's something that kind of keeps me sane because it makes me feel like I'm not just watching the kids and I'm not just, you know, playing with toys all day because after a while you're like, okay, like do I need to play with one more block? No, like I'm tired of this. So that is something that kind of helps me to feel more like I am an individual human and not just a mom. I got a lot more questions about time management. Honestly, that like I could probably do an entire video on that. So I will keep that in mind for a future video where I talk more about like how I juggle. I will never really say balance because I don't think like I'm not balancing and I'm literally just juggling a bunch of things and sometimes things fall and you know, I just do the best that I can. But about how I juggle all the things, the YouTube, the work, the kids, the house, all of the things. So I'll probably do some kind of video for that. So somebody said, I know TMI, but are you back to your regular undies? I'm still in maternity underwear. So I am officially back in my regular undies. I wear thongs sometimes. I wear other like seamless ones where you can't see the like panty lines. I hate panty lines. That's one of my biggest pet peeves is to like see panty lines. But I will say that maternity underwear is super comfortable. And actually for the longest time, I was still wearing my maternity leggings because I'm a big fan of like the stuff that goes all the way up to your belly button. Like I'm a big fan of now like all the high-waisted stuff. I just find that naturally a lot more comfortable. So as long as you're comfortable, wear the heck whatever you want. Wear no underwear. Wear whatever makes you feel comfortable. I mean, you just had a child and you deserve to be comfortable whatever way that is. So if you like maternity underwear and like you are okay with the biggest panty lines in the world with your maternity underwear, then you go for it, girl. Does it get easier as kids grow up or does it get harder? Harder, mom of a four month old baby um it gets harder i wish i could tell you it gets easier as of right now it gets harder like every month it gets harder like i tackle one thing like i tackled the fact that jackson is now sleeping through the night love it best thing ever so you'd think that i'd be the less stressed the less anxious i'm getting all of this sleep throughout the night like i actually get the very least like seven hours of sleep that was like unheard of like months ago and then there's something else like now he's crawling super fast now he started to like stand up on things stands up by the fireplace and he started to like get into things like everything that he can't really get into and joe is working like at the kitchen table and there's cords like all over the floor and if i turn around for two seconds he's climbing towards the cords and it's just like never ends he's a very curious baby and he wants to get into everything and 
the whole like little gate situation that I had set up for him like this month I actually set up the baby gate I took out Riley's old baby gate and I set it up in like the kitchen you know family room area but that didn't work out because every time that I would put him in there he would start screaming because I'd walk away so I decided that it wasn't worth it because then it was like a bunch of clutter in that space and it was just too many things so I was like forget it let's just take this out but now I have no baby gate and I have nowhere to put him in because he doesn't even like like a bouncer I had the baby Einstein bouncer and he hated it he wouldn't stay in it for more than like two minutes so now it really is constantly like watching Jackson watching Riley and like wanting to be in two places at the same time so that part is hard because I still only have two hands Riley's asking me for something he's going somewhere where I can't have him go in and then one of them is gonna be upset so one of them is crying and you know one of them is happy and you know just doing the best that I can like I keep saying eventually I know it will get easier I hope I pray that it will get easier but there's always gonna be something so I've just accepted that there are gonna be hard parts of every stage but there's also gonna be the great great things with every stage and there are so many fun milestones that Jackson has hit now where he's now said his first word it was not mama it was dad a freaking jerk but at least he said his first word and he's more mobile so he plays more he plays more with us he plays more with Riley so that has been wonderful but it has had its challenges like everything else. I'm pregnant with my second. My daughter will be two and a half when the baby is born. Any tips for survival? <sighs> Just give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. Don't have any expectations whatsoever. Riley and Jackson are exactly two years apart. They're off by like a week. Their birthdays are a week apart, but they're both in December. So exactly like two years apart. It's a hard age gap. It's very hard to have them that close in age where you have another little one who's dealing with those terrible twos. Whether or not they can communicate at that age, they're still going through a lot. They're little tiny humans. And that at least for me has been very hard, the age gap. I've told everyone who's asked me that if I could go back and do it. I think I would have put a little bit bigger of a gap. I would have waited till Riley was maybe three to bring Jackson home from the hospital. But at the same time, you know, they are super close and I've loved to see that bond that they've had. But like knowing what I know now, would I have kept that same age gap? Probably not. I probably would have waited an extra year. But you know, God has a plan and he, he at the very least knows what he's doing. So do you find tending to two kids is more manageable now that Jackson is sleeping through the night? The one thing I will say is that yes, it's more manageable like in the evening. The evenings are a thousand times more manageable because of the fact that we have our nights back. Like I explained in the last update, Jackson now is going to sleep like around seven. So after seven o'clock, I'm done. Like I'm done with the day. Joe will usually put Riley down to bed or like sometimes I'll finish putting Jackson down to bed and then I'll pop into the room with Joe and with Riley and then we'll have like Riley and us time and we can just focus on her. And then after that, like around eight is when she's out. So the fact that, you know, the nights are more streamlined definitely helps and we kind of have our routine at this point kind of down packed where we do dinner and then after dinner I take Jackson up to take a bath and then I put him down and then you know we can focus on Riley or Joe can take care of Riley but the other thing that has been more streamlined too is their nap schedule and so Jackson is taking two naps a day one at like 10 in the morning and another one like around two in the afternoon so the one at two in the afternoon is when we're putting Riley down for her nap also so we've kind of made it so that at two o'clock they're both in their cribs Sometimes they both nap, sometimes one of them naps and the other one doesn't, sometimes neither one of them naps, but at least I get about like an hour in the afternoon where they're in their room. A lot of times, like if they're not sleeping, like I have a lot of anxiety about that, so I can't like totally like relax and take a nap, but at least I can get some stuff done around the house or film or edit, do some work. So now that the sleeping has been a little bit more streamlined, a lot more improved, that has definitely helped to kind of you know survive throughout the day all right so i think that's going to be everything that i answer for this video if you guys have any other questions like always just leave them down below in the comments i do these videos every month but i think i may also do just another regular just q a asking me whatever you want sometime soon so if you have any questions just leave them down below i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my stomach so i'm totally wearing like a mismatched outfit i had like these joggers on from before and then i changed my top but anyway this is my stomach eight months postpartum i don't think it's really changed much since any of the other updates I still have these stretch marks that are all there. I mean, my stomach feels a lot tighter 
than it did like at the very beginning like i remember when i was like one month postpartum i had like a lot of like extra skin around here so now that i've kind of lost more of that weight i do feel like my stomach is tighter i feel like my abs more like it's kind of getting a little bit hard over here but i still have those stretch marks that are just there to stay i think that they are fading though i feel like they have gotten a lot lighter and there is like less of that like just jiggly skin so i do feel like that is improving and i think that with time and if i continue to like work out and continue to do like some ab exercises and stuff that I can maybe get my stomach a little bit tighter. But if I don't, I don't. I have bigger fish to fry than that. But that's kind of how things are going around here. I'm dealing with things, going through a lot. Us mamas, we go through a lot for our children. I don't know if people really understand how much we go through physically and mentally. Like, I feel like we think that the pain associated with becoming a mom is like, okay, you're at the hospital and either you get a C-section or you have a baby coming out of your vagina. And obviously both of those situations are super painful. But some people like think like, okay, like that's over with and that's it, you're back to normal and now you just have a baby. And like, that's, that's not the case or at least it has been the case for me. Like mentally I have been forever affected <laughs> and I'm hoping that, you know, with time and through talking about things and educating myself and getting my anxiety treated that I will slowly feel more like myself. Obviously, I'm still functioning, right? I'm still able to do all the things that I do. So I'm not like in a terrible spot. I'm still able to do things. I'm still happy. I still love my life. But I would love to feel a little bit less anxious and less on edge all the time. The point is, like, there's a lot that we go through mentally, physically, and it's not just delivering the baby. There's a lot of stuff after the fact that affects us for many more months and the hormones and the moodiness and the regulating of your cycles and all of that all of that is stuff that we have to go through so as always i hope that you guys enjoyed this update i hope that you guys just enjoyed hearing me chat about all of the craziness i know that it was a very long chatty video but there was a lot of stuff that was happening this month so i love you guys i hope you guys are doing awesome and just thank you for being here like i want you to know how much i appreciate you guys listening to these videos watching them and just encouraging me and giving me advice and feedback i love having this community and i'll never be able to like really tell you guys how much it has helped me through all of this so i love you guys that's it make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys